The Lubies okay. shooting, also known as the Lubies Massacre, was a mass shooting on October 16, 1991, at a Lubies cafeteria in Killeen, Texas. The perpetrator, 35-year-old George Hennard, drove his pickup truck through the front window of the restaurant and shot and killed 23 people and wounded 27 others. In his younger years, he was enlisted in the U.S. Navy, where he experienced many troubles, including an arrest for marijuana possession and a suspension after having a racial argument with a shipmate. He soon went to a substance abuse program in Houston after being suspended again for marijuana possession aboard a cargo ship. He then drifted from job to job, having numerous positions in different states. Hennard eventually became discriminatory against women, once sending two sisters living a couple of blocks away from him, a five-page letter voicing his hatred for them. A week and a half before the massacre at Luby's cafeteria, Hennard resigned from his current job at a cement company at Copperas Cove. According to True TV, Hennard had watched a documentary about James Hubbardy, a disgruntled man who committed a massacre at a San Isidro, California McDonald's restaurant on July 18, 1984, killing 21 people. He also watched The Fisher King, a 1991 movie in which a radio DJ inspires a man into killing several people at a restaurant in a shooting. The two movies inspired him to commit what we now know as the Lou B's Massacre. On October 16, 1991, after eating breakfast at a convenience store he commonly visited, Hennard then drove to a Ludby's cafeteria located 17 miles away in Killeen, Texas, and intentionally crashed his pickup truck into the cafeteria, hitting an older man in the process. People gathered around the truck, believing the crash to be an accident, and Hennard seized the opportunity to shoot at those nearest with his two pistols. He stepped out of his truck and yelled, This is what Bell County has done to me. He then proceeded to continuously shoot at people hiding under the tables at point-blank range, injuring or killing them. Several witnesses have reported seeing Hennard make misogynistic statements at some of his female victims before shooting them. They also said he was smirking the entire time. Most of Hennard's chosen victims were females. After several minutes of shooting and killing, Hennard calmed his rampage and began walking around the restaurant. 28-year-old mechanic Tommy Vaughn then decided to throw himself through a glass window shattering it all together and allowing about a third of everyone still alive to escape just as two police officers arrived responding to the scene. Hennard angrily engaged in a shootout with the officers and suffered from four gunshot wounds. Taking cover in the cafeteria's restrooms, with only one bullet left, Hennard then committed suicide, ending his rampage. Approximately 80 people had been inside the building at the time of the shooting. An ex-roommate of his said he hated blacks, Hispanics, and gays. He said women were snakes and Hennard always made derogatory remarks about them, especially after fights with his mother. Survivors from the cafeteria said Hennard had passed over men to shoot women. Fourteen of the 23 people killed were women, as were many of the wounded. He called two of them a bitch before shooting them. Thank you. 
In Central Texas, scenes from a massacre, the deadliest mass shooting in American history. This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. Good evening. A man went on a bloody rampage in Central Texas today. He drove a truck into a cafeteria, opened fire on the crowd inside, and then committed suicide. It happened in the city of Colleen, about 50 miles north of Austin. When the shooting was over, more than 20 people were dead. CBS News correspondent Scott Pelley is on the scene. It was just afternoon. The cafeteria was jammed when the killer rammed his truck through a window. Witnesses say he fired with a semi-automatic pistol, pulling the trigger as fast as he could. He started by walking down the serving line. Witnesses say he fired, reloaded, and fired again. He was pretty calm about it. He, you know, he wasn't like cussing or saying mother this or that. You know, he just, just opened fire. After several minutes of terror, there was chaos. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I can see. All we could say. see was his, his legs and his body and the gun, and that's all. Because we weren't going to look out from under the tables. I mean, we were underneath the tables just trying to keep from getting hit. And they just kept saying, he's coming this away, he's coming this away. And someone behind us, who was sitting two or three tables from the window, picked up a table and threw it through the window or a chair or something. And, and we just all ran out as Everybody ran out as fast as we could. He kept shouting, I hope all this is worth it. I hope all this is worth it, Texas and Belton. And those were the only things that they kept shouting. Uh, I hope this is worth it, Texas. I hope this is worth it, Belton. As soon as he would shout, he'd start firing again. Just, Just kept randomly on shooting. shot anybody in his path. I thought walked. it was the backfire from the car at first. And then he pulled me underneath the table, and then it just kept on going and going. He just kept shooting and shooting, and it wasn't going to stop. So that's why we ran out. There was maybe... Maybe 15 people, people ran out. People actually got out of the restaurant. The small city, unable to cope with so many wounded, called in the military for help. By late this afternoon, the dead and wounded were still being counted. At least 23 killed, perhaps as many as 20 others in hospitals. It appears to be the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. The gunman was found dead in the restaurant. He apparently shot himself. Tonight, Colleen is in shock, counting the dead, and only now learning the magnitude of the tragedy. We are now live in front of the Luby's restaurant, and we have with us Jackie Pleasance, who was inside the restaurant during the shooting. Jackie, what did you see? What happened? Well, we were sitting at the table, and he came through the, the, the glass, and I thought it was a storm or something. And he came in, and I jumped from one side of the table over to the other one up under the chair. And he jumped out, and he started shooting, and then he said, is it worth it? Is it worth it? This is what Belton made me do. And he started going around in a circle, and he was shooting people, just walking up and shooting. The only thing you could smell was gunpowder where he was shooting people. And you could lay there and wait for him to shoot you because as he was going around, the circle was getting bigger and bigger. And Mr. Ray got round side of me, got over on top of me one way, and the Virginia got on the other side. And I looked up at him, and instead of him shooting me, he shot Nancy because I believe Nancy moved or something. He shot her in the head because when I got up, she had a big hole in the side of her head where he had shot her at. And she just laid there. She didn't move after everybody else had got it because I started going into shock. And then the paramedics and Mr. Ray took me outside. Did the gunman approach you? No, but if he would have kept going around, we were the next ones he was going to shoot because he was going around in the circle. Thank you very much. In the building behind me, there are at least 22 bodies still in place. An army helicopter is being, carried in, is being called in to carry them away. Dan? Scott, and please give our thanks to that remarkably poised and articulate young lady. I spoke with two people who survived the Luby's massacre. They went through their own healing process physically and emotionally during a time when this violent act was unheard of, both hoping to never see something so devastating strike the country again. Move, and he reached down, uh, and he stuck the, the barrel, that 9 millimeter, against the back of my head right there. And just as he pushed, I literally said my last prayer. 
and I thought I was dead. The guy was an absolute murderer. Pastor Kirby Lack and his friend, veterinarian Michael Griffith, met for lunch at the Lubies in Colleen. Griffith and Lack were discussing life and death. Griffith was telling Lack he was afraid no one would attend his funeral one day. Uh, but I looked at him and said, Mike, I love you. You're my friend. I'll be there. And, I mean, that was the last words we said to each other. Seconds later, George Hennard of Belton drove his truck through the front of the restaurant. Unsure of what was happening, Lack ran over to help the injured. He crawled out of the truck. And when he looked at me, he just came up and pointed. Um, I started moving before he shot, so he missed me. Her father rushed the gunman giving his life to try and save others. My dad broke away from my grasp and ran at the man. So he saw my dad coming and he simply turned and, and shot him. Um, my dad went down in the aisle between me and the gunman. Someone inside threw a chair through a window, allowing many to escape, including Susanna. But her mother stayed behind to be with her husband of 47 years. Uh, they had just had their 47th wedding anniversary and she wasn't going anywhere without him. As she cradled him and the cops began to arrive, uh, they saw the gunman walk to her and they said she looked up at him, put her head down and he pulled the trigger. And that's how they knew which one was the gunman. The shooter circled back around to where Lack and a few others were hiding, killing more people, including Lack's friend Michael. I had I had just kind of smeared some blood on my face on the side, and I covered my face with my hand, to, hoping he would think I was dead. And he kicked me, I didn't move, and he reached down, uh, and he stuck the, the barrel, that nine millimeter, against the back of my head right there. And just as he pushed, I literally said my last prayer, and I thought I was dead. But the shooter looked up, distracted by the approaching police officers, and shot just off to the side of Lack's head. He shot, and, you know, I mean, it was deafening. It's, uh, everything just went like a ringing noise. And uh, I lay there for a second, and I opened my eyes, and I thought, that jerk missed me. I mean, how do you miss? We need to teach our kids, and we need to teach society. You can't get by with this anymore. You've got to be held responsible for your actions. That's just not taught anymore. I used to have my boys close their eyes and say, I'd say, tell me where the exits are. How many are there and where are they? It's particularly disturbing that one of my children could easily be a, a, a part of one of those. A pink granite memorial stands behind the Killing Community Center with the date of the event and the names of those killed. The restaurant reopened five months after the massacre but closed permanently on September 9, 2000. As of 2020, a Chinese-American buffet called Yangtze occupies the location.